Hey guys, what's up? I wasn't really planning on vlogging today. It's already like 11 a.m. But, I mean, you basically already know how my morning goes. I eat waffles, and then I check in with clients, and all that fun thing. So, we'll just skip most of the morning. Uh, I'm currently waiting for some people to come check out a few items that I'm selling. I've made the decision to basically sell all of my belongings that I had from my past and from my marriage. Like, basically all my furniture, my, my kitchen stuff. It all was the same things that I had in my marriage. And I'm in this place in my life where I want to kind of start fresh. Uh, and I, I hold so many memories in those sort of things, even if it's just like the couch or the table or books or kitchenware. So I'm kind of purging things in my life. Spring cleaning, I guess you could say, <laughs> since it is spring now. But, uh, so yeah, that is that. I've been feeling a little bit off lately and I've just been kind of uh, trying to figure out what that is. And that's one of the beauties of testosterone is that <laughs> ever since starting, I've had a harder time like figuring out my emotions. Like I feel them, but I'm always uh, a little bit late. I lag a bit on really acknowledging what it is that's making me feel a little bit off. And I think today I have acknowledged the fact that I really <laughs> don't want to have another surgery because uh, the downtime is gonna drive me insane. So I'm trying to deal with that mentally. And then also like springtime is always kind of a strange time for me because it was the time of my life when I went through my first heartbreak, but then also the time of my life where I started preparing to get ma get married at the age of 21. So there was like a lot of, a lot of wedding planning going on and uh, all of that kind of thing. So I'm just purging the old memories as much as possible and starting fresh as much as possible and trying to keep my mind off of surgery. That's the basis of this video. It's gonna be super awesome. <laughs> and it's already long and rambly and boring, I am sure. But uh, welcome to the day. Hope you enjoy. I'm going to finish checking in some people and then hopefully sell a kitchen table and a bed frame. And I'm gonna go to the gym. And oh yeah, I have a doctor's appointment. I'm going to my local urologist because of my insurance issues with Dr. Chen. Uh, I want to have a local guy close to me just in case I get to the point where I'm in need of a catheter. If my insurance takes forever to approve my surgery, that's supposed to be in a little under a month now. So that's it. Thank you for joining and I will see you in a bit. All right, so I successfully sold my kitchen table for $35. <laughs> so now I'm starving, so I'm gonna eat lunch. And I got salmon from Trader Joe's, some broccoli that I'm gonna steam, and then just some butternut squash that is already cooked. So that's pretty much ready to go. And it should be pretty easy, simple, and quick. So let's get cooking. All right, got my broccoli steaming in here. This will only take like five minutes, so let that go. I'm gonna get started on the salmon. Get that heated up. Just gonna season the salmon with some salt and pepper. Uh, so, some salt. This pan heated up some avocado oil. Do skin side down first because you want to get that skin nice and crispy. Well, the fish and the broccoli are steaming. I'm just gonna scoop this out of here. I'm gonna do about, we'll see if I can get like 200 grams out of this. Mash it up. And you can add some coconut oil or some sort of fat in here, but 
The salmon that I'm having is already pretty fatty, so I have to watch my macros a little bit. I am going on a mini cut now, so I've got to keep the rest of the fats low since the salmon is pretty high in fat. Good fat, it's good for you, but you know. I'm just gonna put this in the microwave for a couple minutes and then it's done. All right, so one thing you wanna look for when you're cooking salmon is you can kind of see how far, if the smoke wasn't in the way, you can see how far it's cooked up. I like to flip my salmon when it hits B about halfway up cooked. You don't wanna overcook your salmon and you can actually eat your salmon like a medium rare kind of like a steak. So you don't be too afraid if your salmon's supposedly like a little bit on the underdone side. It tastes amazing. Overcooked salmon is disgusting. All right, so salmon is done. I'm about to take that off. And so is the broccoli done steaming. I've got my squash. Now I'm gonna show you how to make something very simple look pretty. And the way to do that is basically with just just some garnish and that sort of thing. So I'll get going on showing you how to do that. So first things first, I'm going to plate the squash. And the biggest secret to making things look good is to give it some height. So, now I'm gonna add the broccoli. I've already seasoned this broccoli. It's got salt and pepper on it. Looks tasty, right? So notice how it's kind of got a little bit more height to it. And then, we've got our, got a little bit of dill. So, when you're looking to plate things, what do you want to look for most is color, like a contrast, some height, and kind of like a pretentious garnish. Where's my knife? Okay. Set some dill. Dill goes really well with salmon, so yeah. Go for it. Eh, I didn't really want to do that. But you get it. Uh, and then, microgreens. You can make pretty much anything look fancy with microgreens. You don't do this whole little dill thing I just did. You're not supposed to make it look shitty. So just keep it on the salmon. <laughs> okay. You don't want things on the rim of your plate. This doesn't have a rim, but that was close enough. So. We got some microgreens, so we're gonna give it more height with these greens. And then, bam, done. <laughs> so this is the secret to making anything look fancy, really. So if you want to impress your friends with a really simple meal, this is how you do it. I'm gonna eat this now. <laughs> I'm trying to get it in like natural lighting, it looks a little weird right now. Voila. One last thing I want to show you before I eat. I want to show you what this looks like inside. So see how it looks kind of like raw? That's like perfect. That is a perfect cooked salmon. I mean, some people might prefer a little bit more well done. But this is how I like it. So uh, yeah, don't overdo it guys. All right, time for me to get to the gym before it is too late because I need to come back here and shower before I go to the doctor just in case he looks at my wiener and smells my balls. So <laughs> um, not, not specifically tries to smell them, but just Anyways, I want to show you what I've been working on. I've been working hard on my recipe book that I'm aiming to release April 25th, which is the day before my surgery. So I want to give you a little sneak peek at what it consists of. So 
Whoa, where's my mouse? Okay. <laughs> uh, just been working hard on this, and it not only comes with, like, directions, but pictures with all of it. And then also, each recipe has the calories and macros at the top. So, you always kind of know where you're at. You don't have to really guess. And that sort of thing. So, yeah. That's what I've, what I've been busy doing. So, look out for that on April 25th. And uh, I'll have it up on my website for sale. And yeah. So yeah, time to go to the gym. workout's done. <laughs> you guys, I have like every intention to always film when I go into the gym and I even switch gyms because the one that I've been going to for a really long time has progressively just gotten very crowded at all times of the day and filming is just completely out of the question. So I, I switched gyms and it's actually, I always get a great workout, they have great equipment, it's not overly crowded and I love it. Uh, <clears throat> but one, it's still kind of weird to bring a camera in and I guess I'm semi afraid to get in trouble. And I also have like a smaller camera I like to bring in to kind of like look less uh, obvious of filming. And then I'm also trying to get my friend Andrew to join this gym so he can help me out. I mean, <laughs> but I haven't been successful yet, but we'll see. Anyways, I have to shower before my appointment and uh, yeah, it's like 70 degrees now in California, which is crazy because just the other day it was freezing and I was scraping ice off my windshield. So I've successfully like sweated through my, my shirt, but it actually feels really good to sweat and not just be cold and it's sunny outside. So I might get a walk in later. All right, so. I have a text. <laughs> um, snacking on an apple. I'm hungry, but I'm waiting on this person to come get my bed frame that I'm trying to sell. Um, yeah, hey, everything I sell is one step closer to that possible $5,000 that I might have to pay for surgery. <laughs> um, so I saw my urologist that's local here, and I guess he said he had a patient that's been having a similar problem that had metodioplasty with Dr. Chen on the insurance issues. So he's like, last case scenario, I'll talk to Dr. Chen and he'll see what he can do for me basically. Which if my insurance doesn't, for whatever reason, let me see Dr. Chen, I would probably end up going to him for urethroplasty because I don't want to drive down to San Francisco. Like my assumption is that they'll make me go to Dr. Safer because Brown Scene and Crane is probably considered in network. That's where Dr. Chen used to work, and Safer might be considered like in network. But I feel like my interactions with this local urologist have actually been better. Um, he's a nice guy. He seems like he cares a lot. He seems like his patient patient care is really good. And um, I've met Dr. Safer a few times, and I haven't been impressed with his bedside bedside manner at all. Like he just, I feel like he just 
looks like he doesn't want to be there all the time. So that's not really the kind of person that I want to operate on me. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have the wrong judgment, but if you've had him for anything else, maybe you've had a better experience. But from my uh, experience with him, it wasn't really pleasant. So hopefully my insurance will cover me to go to Dr. Chen. But uh, if not, at least I have a little bit of a backup plan. So yeah, anyways, I don't know. I'm just really wanting to eat. Waiting for people to pick up my shit. So I'll check in with you when I can actually eat and cook real food. So yeah, see you in a bit. All right, so no luck selling my uh, bed frame that these people made me <laughs> wait around for. Uh, they're gonna think about it, but they should think fast because I've got more people interested. Anyways, I'm starving. I'm gonna cook dinner, and this is what is on the menu today. So I've got ground turkey, tomatoes, cauliflower rice, and regular rice. So I made this on another video, but I had to take it down. So this is a quick meal that I'm gonna do again because I eat it pretty regularly. So I'm gonna be mixing regular rice and cauliflower rice because it gives it more volume. So the secret to trying to stay full while you're like cutting or dieting or whatever uh, is to eat more volume and that usually means vegetables. So yeah, vegetables are healthy, but they also fill you up better and they've got like fiber and all those micronutrients that are good for you. So now I'm gonna get started with the turkey. I'm gonna use curry powder, smoked paprika, and garlic powder, and I'm gonna get cooking. Garlic. Curry powder. Oh man, this is the worst. All right, turkey is done. So I'm just gonna scoop that up into a different container so I can weigh that out and everything. All right, now I'm gonna cook the cauliflower rice. So I'm just gonna start that again. Add some avocado oil. This is about six ounces of cauliflower rice. Add about a cup of these tomatoes. Or whatever. A little bit of salt. Still have to add the rice to this, so I don't want to salt it too much. Curry powder. Garlic. That's cooking up. I am going to get my turkey weighed out. Six ounces of turkey, which is right there. All right, so the tomatoes are starting to split open a bit. The skin's coming off of them, softening up. So I'm gonna add in the rice. That is five ounces or a cup. More salt. More curry powder. Mix it up. It looks like you're eating a lot more rice than you are. Gives it some more volume. And it's really simple. And that's basically done. So I'm just gonna go put it in the container with the turkey and call it good. So here's dinner. 
get over here. It's pretty uh, shitastic, but I like to add a little bit of sriracha on top just to give it a little bit more of a zing. I have never said zing before in my life. I don't know why I just said that. Uh, and if you want to make it look a little bit less like dog food, you can always just add a little green to it. There. Bam. <laughs> Cilantro. It's pretty good. You might think it tastes like soap, and I'm sorry if you do. That is your genetics. But uh, I enjoy it, so I'm gonna eat this now. I'm just gonna end the vlog here. I'm just, I'm still learning on how to do this whole vlog thing. My life is not very exciting, so maybe I, I shouldn't vlog. But, uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far. And, uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, you probably, I don't know. But, <laughs> anyways, I'll keep you posted on my whole insurance I mean, peeing situation. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace out.